It's time for our first hot topic on the breakfast. And uh, Frank Eliana is our guest, is a technology and media news editor at Business Day. But before you get to see Frank, what are we talking about? President Bola Tinubu, who is our uh, chief marketer, and his team have been wooing uh, foreign investors to seize uh, uh, the opportunities in the country to come to Nigeria and invest. They've he also just, called. Just rang a bell. <laughs> at Nasdaq. <laughs> They've also called Nigerians living in the diaspora to come home and invest in the country. Well, the push of this administration to attract foreign direct investment into the country are loud, but many are saying that um, uh, the factors are fiscal. Our weak fiscal and monetary framework uh, are scaring the foreigners from coming to Nigeria. Just four days ago, the U.S. warned its citizens mm. to reconsider traveling to Nigeria due to increased risk of crime, terrorism, civil unrest, kidnapping, and armed gangs in the country. Frank, it's time to unveil you. You're welcome to the program. <laughs> Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to be on the show. Pleasure to yeah, have so you. <laughs> Yes. Go right ahead. Okay. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, we've we've been on this case for a very long time, and uh, um, every time it, uh, um, you elect a Nigerian president, their first port of call is outside mm -hmm. to go try to woo investors to come into the country and uh, maybe go to Nigerian diaspora to say, hey, yeah, there's an environment for you to come and invest, mm -hmm. you know, but. They forget that these guys actually have eyes. They've got uh, ears. They even have uh, siblings here in Nigeria who tell them what is happening. And in the past election, um, I think it was it was uh, it's a large number of uh, diaspora Nigerians, you know, trying to participate in the election. They saw what happened. They saw how the election went. They saw uh, the shenanigans that INEC pulled. And they know the type of government that we eventually inherited. So at the end of the day, that same government comes to them and say, hey, look, you guys need to come back and come and invest in your country. The question is, in whose country? Mm. As in, um, God, the day you talk about patriotism and all of that, you know, people want just, just want the right things to be done. And uh, those things were not done. The right things were not done. Then you, uh, you turn around to come and convince them that this time around it is going to become done, you know. It doesn't add up. Nothing adds up. So first of all, from that point of view, these guys are like, no, um, we don't trust you. We've never trusted any of you before. And you put us right the last time that we even tried to be involved. So what has changed? Absolutely nothing. I just came back from um, South Africa um, yesterday. And from the airport... Climbing to the Top Melan Bridge. The Top Melan Bridge is, is um, I, I think it should have a rank as maybe one of the worst bridge um, built by a mega city in any country. The bottom of there are a dead trap when it's raining. How should I, an investor, want to come into a country where the infrastructure is dead, is, is dead, dead on arrival? How do I take my goods from one part of that country to another? That is what we are talking about. So before you go out to go and be telling people, come to our country, we have space for you, we have opportunities, there's a lot of potential, potential, potential. Have you done the just the basic things? Clear your roads, create the avenues for goods and transport and services to, to pass. What are the logistics bottlenecks that you have addressed? What have you fixed in terms of in terms of electricity? So if you go to pitch, if you are, if you're a startup, for instance, or, or you're a small business, you're going to pitch to investor. There must be something now that you're going to, to them to say, look, this is what we have done. We have done so, so and so traction. We have so and so customers. We have uh, maybe expanded our services to to that and that and that. The question is, what exactly are we selling to investors? I'm driving right now and. Left, right, and, and center are decks, as in waste, waste, breaking everywhere. Something holding us up here for like three hours. So, exactly how do you want to convince investors to come into a country like that? It doesn't add up. So, first of all, shut down the country, 
do the heavy lifting, make things safe. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not living in the same country here in Nigeria. There's nothing said about this country. Okay, let me quote. So, let me, you have to. Yeah. Go let, ahead. let me quote the president uh, when he, you know, was at uh, the Nasdaq on Wednesday. Um, part of what he said to the foreign audience there is, I quote, "It's a great honor for me to be here." I am happy to bring Nigeria to your doorsteps, and I'm honored that we are here today with a bubbling Nigerian stock market that will evolve in the West African sub-region. The greatest economy in Africa is Nigeria. There is an immense opportunity in Nigeria where you can invest your money without fear. Uh, do you not think that the president is making sense here? No, he's not. When you say um, make an investment without fear, <laughs> uh, um, what does that even mean? Insecurity is 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 high, or criminality has increased. There's no part of Nigeria that you can be, you can go today and not watch over your back, and not be thinking, uh, um, "Am I safe here?" So first of all, have you faced security before you start saying um, people should not fear? And secondly, he is not the one to bring Nigeria to the doorstep of of foreign investors. Um, let me tell you how it works. If you, if you fix the country infrastructure, fix the negative environment, make things work, it is like businesses that take you to the doorstep of, of foreign investors. So that even when you decide to appear in such forums, call it the UN, call it any um, uh, African investment forum, Europe investment forum, or UK investment forum, any forum at all that involves businesses, your people have already projected you. They've already shown that things are working in your country. There are testimonials that show that things are working. Not when you appear, and there are a lot of testimonials that say that, no, don't go there. Think things are not working. Now, look at the, the U.S., telling their citizens not to go to Nigeria. And you are telling them that they should not fear and come to your country to come and do what? The portal of your country alone can, can make their countries, uh, can make their cars go bad in, in one month or, or two months. That, that we can't see Nigeria that I Because of portals, everything is not working. So what exactly should, not, should they not fear about? Is it this business environment where taxation is suffering your own local businesses that have not been addressed? So what exactly should, should they not fear about? That's, those are the questions that these guys are asking. Again, you have to realize the fact that these guys are highly intelligent. They've got a lot of money. And they didn't just make those monies by just sitting down and doing nothing. They made those monies by smart investment. They are looking for places that are viable for them to put their money. They're not looking for potential alone. It is potential meets with, meets with the right environment. So we go with potential, we leave the right environment behind. So first of all, the president has to think about providing the right environment, the enabling environment for businesses to thrive. If they are not thriving, foreigners will not want to come in a place to where your own businesses are, not, are, are dying. Frank, it's not happening. This is the point. Frank, yes. there is a new acting CBN governor and his team that have been put in place by this administration. Let's look at the factors affecting the effectiveness of Nigeria's monetary and fiscal policies and how this new team can begin to do something differently. Okay, so what are the factors affecting uh, um, the economy? Production, number one. If your if your if if your production is low, you cannot expect any output, um, meaningful output that will contribute um, the type of revenue that you're looking for. Our production is very very low across every sector. Okay, the oil sector, um, the the manufacturing sector, any sector that you mention, the production is far below what it's supposed to be. The telecoms that is uh, like the cash cow of the government right now is basically hanging by its thread, um, propelled by just two, two telecom or operators that are sort of uh, I'm holding up. The others are fighting for their lives. Then you have the oil sector where major oil companies are beginning to rethink staying in Nigeria, they are leaving. Then you have the FMCG uh, um, uh, um, sector where many of them are closing shop. 
where many of them are rethinking what they are producing, where, they are, where many of them are reducing the, the quantity of goods that they are producing. You have the manufacturing sector where the output, the, product, the productivity has consistently fallen um, in the past, um, say, 10 years. You know, so across different sectors, productivity is very, very low. Until you show up those numbers, you are not going anywhere. There's no CBN policy that will make anything change. It is not a, it's not a curse. It is what is. You have to do the heavy lifting. You have to look at how do you propel your, your, your local companies forward. You don't make promises and not fulfill it. We are still waiting for the government to fulfill the promise to the manufacturing sector of the money that they, that they plan to release. And when you release that money, we also need to see that there is a modality, there's a process that ensures that that money is easily accessible. It's not the one that you release to banks or release to your cronies and they steal the money. And eventually, maybe if it's 17 naira, they are, the people that are supposed to get the money eventually get 20 naira. No. You have to fix productivity, production, production, production. Until you do that, if we continue to consume, then we will continue to run around in cycles. That is where we are. So it's not magic. It is simple economics. Produce, you sell, then you export. That's what you're supposed to do. If you don't export, you can earn money. So going to call for investors to come into your country, to come and, come and do what exactly? They don't have infrastructure to come and work with you. In South Africa, again, I have to make reference to that. They started experiencing what they call load shedding. Load shedding for them is uh, this uh, normal thing that we have normalized here in Nigeria where Nepal takes your lights or, or the discos take your lights and it stays for like 18 hours. Nobody um, uh, uh, makes a fuss about it. But in South Africa, it's a big force because they, they were not used to it. Mm -hmm. So they started calling it load shedding. And what's load shedding for them is two hours, two hours of light going off. So in 24 hours, maybe they have two hours of light going up. They're like, ah, it is there. Uh, they don't know when it's going to happen, when it's not going to happen and all that. But it's a society that is working. Things are happening. You go there, you think you're in Europe. And it's still in African country. So why can't we get ours right? And our leaders go there. They see these things. Why can't they replicate it? Just fix productivity. Fix the enabling environment. Allow businesses to do what they are supposed to do, to be the business. You don't need to go begging foreigners to come to your country and all that. You don't. Once you do the heavy lifting, foreigners will come to beg you to come into your country. Okay, uh, Frank. But this time around... Frank, just, have, just, yeah. a, just a moment. Um, before we wrap up, I'm just wondering, you just talked about allowing business to, to do business. And some of the things that the government has allowed to, to happen uh, naturally are, one, the Naira, floating the Naira to make sure market forces are the ones that determine the strength of the Naira. And now we're complaining that the weak uh, Naira and the fiscal policy is influencing uh, the amount of people that may come into the country. Another thing is oil, which is like the life wire of Nigeria. And they say it has been deregulated, so the market forces will determine how much it is being sold. Now, we may have a situation where we'll buy one liter of fuel for, for 1,000 naira, just like we are finding the naira here. In some places, it's 1,100 naira. In some places, it's 1,000 naira and all that. So is it really a, a wise decision to let some critical things uh, just flow with nature, flow with, with the tide as it is. Market forces. Yeah, market forces as they are putting it. Or was it a very unwise decision for the government, for instance, to just float the Naira and let oil uh, be the way it is? So there are reasons why you have a government in place. You know, um, um, you have a government in place oftentimes to um, put a break into something. You know, if you if you allow society to just continue, um, everybody to live their lives the way they want it and all that, the, the tendency towards anarchy or chaos is what you will find, which is why you say, okay, this is government. It brings in a law. It brings in a, a line and say, this is as, as far as you can go, you know? So... It is, it is absolutely not um, possible for you to just live your life the way you want to 
live it. It's the same way businesses just can't run the way they want to live, uh, the, the way they want to run. If if you allow that, what you find is that you have you have a the bigger one, you probably um, stifling out um, the smaller ones. Uh, you know, competition becomes uh, um, too too steep for some people. And then, of course, at the end of the day, you find that you probably have not created the kind of employment that you want to create for a lot more people that will be that will not be able to get to where those other big big businesses are. All right. So, which is why when government does something, it needs to be deliberate. It needs to think it through. First of all, the floating of the Naira, in my opinion, was not thought through properly. It was not thought through. Yeah, some people have projected that it is the right thing to do. And then, of course, even, even the, uh, what was called, um, the, 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 so Thank you so much, Frank. We're having discussion with Frank Eliana, technology and media uh, news editor at Business Day newspaper. He joined us to take a look at um, Nigeria's weak fiscal monetary policy framework, scaring away foreign investors from coming to Nigeria to invest. That has been our first hot topic. We'll go away and come back with our second hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>